What's up, crew? How much? Like playing in the snow, I can't wait. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, obviously, you get to go back to Wisconsin. Um, we know it's gonna be a tough environment, um, you know, and uh, you know we're really looking forward to it. We're having a bullish approach to the whole thing, and you know, we really have to be tough-minded. And uh, and uh, you know we, we, we hope we we want a tough environment. We we look forward to those type of situations, and and. Um, so I'm hoping it's coming down. I'm hoping it's it's snowing. I'm hoping it's kind of a a, a downpour of snow. So that that'll be great. What's going against Aaron Rodgers mean to you, a guy that that good? Uh, that we're playing, um, obviously that we're playing the Packers. That's really all that means. He's he's a phenomenal quarterback. Um, have tons of respect for how he plays the game, um, and uh, and so it'll be a great football game. Um, and they got a lot of great players on that field, and, and we will too. So it'll be a it'll be a battle for sure. You played in cold and ext extreme cold last year, and some snow. I mean, what what changes for you when when the weather's like that? Well, uh, you know, last year playoff game was was you know polar opposite. I mean, it was just uh, crazy cold. Um, this uh, this week, I don't think it'll be that bad, um, but it will probably be coming down knowing uh, knowing the state of Wisconsin. It'll probably be snowing pretty good. So nothing really changes. You just have to protect the ball in terms of running it. Um, same thing with throwing it too. And, and uh, but at the same time, um, you still have to have that aggressive mentality and uh, make make our plays and. Um, it's always harder, uh, in my opinion, for the defense, really, actually, because we know where we're going, they don't. Um, and so in terms of our runs, in terms of our passes, you know, you want to take advantage of that. Russell, when did you feel like Justin Britt was really, uh, you know, getting acclimated to playing center and you felt like he really had a shot to be as good as he's been? Well, this training camp, I really noticed how, how great Britt was doing. And then we got into the games and he was just, uh, nobody could get by him. And, he, and we had some very, very tough competition really early on in some of the top defensive lines. And uh, he was handling it with such great poise. He was physical. Um, and, you know, the great thing about Justin Britt, he works at it, first of all. I think second of all, he's extremely talented. And third of all, he, uh, mentally, uh, he's trying to master the game you know, every week. And, and so just meeting with him, I've been able to be with him for three Three years now, and just to be able to communicate with them and be in meetings, you know, one on one, us talking early in the week and and communicating throughout the whole entire week, and then obviously on the game day is, is I think a, a vital point, you know, a crucial point to all of that. And I think Joey Hunt did a phenomenal job stepping in for him. Uh, it's a great thing to know that we have a guy that can play right now uh, and, and and be calm and poised to be able to play at a high level. Uh, but it, al it is also great to have you know, a center like Justin Britt. I think he's playing like a Pro Bowl center, in my opinion, and I think he's playing uh, very fast, very strong. He he's pass protecting uh, like crazy, and so he's doing a great job. You guys have run the ball well the last few games. Just what what does that do for the whole offense? When well, when you, when you can run the ball as successful as we have the past few games, um, it's a great thing because, one, I think it brings that, uh, that physical approach back. Um, I think it also allows us to go downhill and also help our play-action game a little bit. Um, and also just to see Thomas Rawls run the football the way he's running it right now is exciting. I mean, he, he's worked so hard for it all. and uh, He's one of the top running backs in the National Football League. Um, he, he's an exciting player. He's a physical player. He can do it all. And, uh, and we want to continue that. And so uh, I, I think it helps the whole offense. We want to be versatile. We want to be able to do it all. We have all these, you know, talented, talented receivers. We have these tight ends that can make plays all over the field. You have these running backs. We've had a bunch of uh, running backs come in and out of, the, uh, out of and out of the games, obviously this year. And to get our core running back back in, t in terms of Thomas Rawls is a huge thing. And uh, I think the offensive line is doing a great job right now, of allowing us to get those big runs and, and those big passes and those those quick balls out and, and letting guys catch it and run. So that's that's key. Would it snow in Virginia when you were growing up playing football? Yeah, for sure. You get all four seasons in Virginia. Um, so that's, that's uh, you know, summer's extremely hot. Um, fall time's beautiful there. Winter time's, you definitely get a ton of snow. I, I remember uh, playing at my at my friend's houses all the time, Zach Mendez, and playing at his house and, and playing in the snow. And we'd stay up to 3 o'clock in the morning playing out in the snow. So um, it would definitely snow there a bunch. Not as much as Wisconsin, though. <laughs> in your short time in Wisconsin, did you do anything with the Packers or go visit them or did, did any interaction at all with them? Uh, no, we saw some players every once in a while. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I didn't have the opportunity to really go up there that much. It was about, uh, about two hours or so away um, for the most part. Um, and then, you know, when I got there, it was summertime, and I was studying the playbook like crazy. I gave myself three weeks to learn the whole playbook. And so I was just there all, all morning, all night on my own, just trying to study as much as I could. And then, you know, we'd hang out with the players and, and all that. And so we had that connection. And then, obviously, the school, school year started, and I was taking tons of grad school classes and, and also, obviously, playing football. And the next thing I know, the season was over, and I was training at IMG, getting ready for the combine. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go up there. But 
you could see, you know, how much, uh, you know, the Packers were uh, a vital part to all the lives in Green Bay and, and, and Wisconsin just in general. Um, you know, my teammates would love, you know, obviously uh, wearing all the Packers stuff and all that. So you have those big offensive linemen, you know, who, who played now play in the National, Fo National Football League, you know, Kevin, you know, Kevin Zeitler and tons of other guys, uh, Travis Frederick. You know, they'd come in with, you know, shorts on and sandals and a, and a, and a Green Bay T-shirt on and, and – uh, you know, and it'd be, for, you know, you know, t 10 degrees outside. So um, th that's how passionate those people are about it. You've obviously got to get Steven Terrell a lot in practice. What, what's he like as a player and what, you know, what's got your eye about him? Well, I think he's extremely cerebral. Uh, he's extremely smart. He, he's fast as can be. He can make all the plays, catches the ball really well. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll play great, and I'm looking forward to watching him step up and making plays for us. He's, he's had the opportunity to be, be behind the you know, two best safeties in the National Football League and, and Cam Chancellor and Earl Thomas, and to learn from those guys, it really helps. So um, I, I expect great things for him, and he's going to do a great job. Your statistics in December have been really good over your career, and this team has won a lot of games this time of year. What, what do you think it is that allows both you and the team to play at a high level down the stretch? Well, I think uh, every season's a process, and you go through the ups and downs of the season. You continue to learn, you continue to grow, you continue to build, and that's what you always want to, you know, be on. You always want to be on that constant uh, growth, and uh, and that's what you really want because you always want to be building into the hopefully the playoffs. And so, you know, for us. Um, and and from, even for myself, I just continually, you know, uh, focus on the fundamentals of the game, you know, and, and really keep it, try to keep it simple. And then the exciting things will happen from there. Um, and so, uh, you know, I attribute that to the, to the coaches, to, the, to, the, to our guys and how hard we work together. Um, you know, the, the fellowship that we, that we put into this game, you know, it, it, we're really dedicated. And, uh, and we have to continue that zealous approach and, and it will continue to build. Well, so you guys have never lost consecutive games in the second half of the year. What is it about this group that allows you to keep bouncing back even when you have a week that doesn't go your way? Well, I think it's the, the mentality. Uh, I think it's the bullish approach, like I said earlier. I, I think being tough-minded and to be able to overcome situations. Uh, and uh, just focusing one game at a time. You know, you can't, you know, no matter how many games we've won, we won a lot of football games in five years, but you know, no matter how many games we've won, we've always been able to move on to the next one. And it's the same mentality, even if you unfortunately lose a game, you have to be able to move on to the next one. You, you shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't, uh, you, know, m you know, move up and down, you know, that, that much. You should really, really be uh, kind of neutral and just continue to focus on the process and enjoy the process and enjoy the journey and, and see where it takes you. And, and hopefully uh, it takes you to a good place. Is a bullish approach similar to a Mulish approach? Mulish, yeah, that's very similar. Very similar, very similar. <laughs> Eight. You obviously have mentioned the, the arena project you know, a few times now. Is there anything new on, on that front? Well, I submitted, obviously submitted a letter um, to the mayor and the city, and, and, uh, and I, I believe we put it posted online this morning. I haven't obviously been able to check, um, but, um, but we submitted that this morning. Um, I was able to write that and, and put that together. So I, I think it's, um, it's a process. It's a, it's a, it's a journey. It's a, it's a long process, but you, uh, you know, hopefully great things will happen with it, and, and hopefully we can you know, change lives and give opportunities to people and, and inspire, inspire young kids and, and people all over. So uh, that will be a cool thing to bring you know, Soto Arena here and, and uh, allow an uh, and, and NBA or NHL team to play here. You wrote it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you learn writing that? What I learned writing it? What, what, into, what background did you have to do? What did you well, write? you know, I obviously have you know, a great team and, and, and Chris and Wally and the crew and Pete and everybody and Eric. Um, but just obviously asking, asking them questions, understanding, you know, uh, the process, you know, of the, whole, of, of the whole Soda Arena process. And so I've been able to learn that, that, learn that whole situation. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a political thing uh, a little bit. But, uh, you know, I think, with, I think with due time it'll work out. Are you weary of the politics of, of wading into that that you're going into? Yeah, I mean, that's not my focus right now at this moment. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, it's a process. And, and so, um, you know, it is, there's, there's bits and pieces, obviously, uh, that you continue to, to, to learn about and continue to, to understand. And, um, but I, at the end of the day, I, I think about uh, joining on to a team of, of great people, first of all. I think that's always a key thing. Um, and I think also about... Uh, the whole aspect of, of, of bringing a basketball team here, of, of bringing something that's meant so much to just the city of Seattle by, in itself. You know, I think about when I was a young kid, like I said before, and how much the Sonics meant to me. And I was a kid from Virginia, just a small town kid from Virginia, and how much, you know, uh, that, that team meant, you know, growing up and those players and Gary Payton and people like that. 
Um, and then, you know, I also think about the opportunities that it brings. You know, I don't, I don't see a negative in it at all, honestly. I think that it's going to be a, uh, a true blessing to everybody in the city. Hopefully we'll win a lot of, win a lot of basketball games or hockey games and, and be able to, you know, have concerts there and, and, and venues and, and different events and, and all that and give opportunities to people that uh, they may not see right now, but hopefully they'll see down the road. Anything else? Thank you, guys. Go Hawks. Soto.